and then manifesting that into this natural realm. I wanted to touch base on that. How does it work? I'm not going, I'm not going to go into full detail on that because it is a lot of information. I don't want to overwhelm you. I do have a mentorship group. I'm not trying to sell anything. So I actually, I don't even want to talk about that. It, what I want to show you, what I want to tell you is the soul holding the mind, will, and the emotions. If somebody is whole, right? Their, their whole soul is going to be like hundred percent, right? What if the soul is so fragmented that it's, it's fragmented in like a thousand pieces, right? And maybe 800 of those pieces are in these realms, or maybe even 900 pieces are in these realms. Well, then the, the core person is going to have more of a manifested thought of what these soul fragments are living in these counterfeit realms. So it's going to determine um, what you say and what you do and how you act and how you live your life. Hence, um, the enemy likes to keep us busy. So if he keeps us busy, we will live out of a subconscious mind. How many times have we driven to um, a place that we drive to every day? We end up heading that way when we're not going that way, but it's just programming that like you get in the car and you head to work. Well, it's a Sunday. You're like, why am I heading to work? It's just a subconscious programming that happens. Um, it's happened to me many times when I go to get coffee, like I'll go and, uh, put my coffee pod in the thing. I'll close it, press the button, walk away. Well, I come back in the kitchen and there's coffee all over the counter. It's because I subconsciously made the coffee like that. I was in a subconscious, uh, state of mind. Um, so what, what happens when we're subconscious state of mind, our mind is accessing a cloud. Um, and, and that's where I talked in the last video about there's like a cloud, a storage cloud of all the knowledge and all the things that our soul fragments have been learning in these counterfeit realms. And it's uploaded to this cloud and we access it. Um, there's like certain things. It's like, a you know, let's just imagine it being like a computer or something like that. There's certain files that I will just access. And then there's certain files that the enemy will open up the connection during very crucial times of my life. Like if I was supposed to um, maybe in my book, in my destiny, I was supposed to marry a particular person, but the day I went on the date with them, Satan opened up another file in my head that made me believe that no, I shouldn't go on this date. They're going to harm me. So I'm just going to cut off all communication. How did that happen? It was because Satan created an access file between my mind and his counterfeit. I call it his counterfeit because it's Satan's counterfeit consciousness that he has created. Um, hence, there's a lot of things that are trying to be birthed into this earth um, by basically creating counterfeit consciousness. What I have seen in the spiritual realm is this cloud. This is the best way I can say it. Okay. It's a cloud based counterfeit consciousness that has us all running on a certain program. For those of you that know about the courts of heaven and you've known about the courts of heaven for a while, when you talked about the courts of heaven to other people, they were like, no, that's not a thing. It's just, um, it's not real. You, you know, just, it's just a fad. They use all these different things because at that time, Satan was trying his best to keep us from accessing the court of heaven through a counterfeit lie that he was able to, to send down into the people, into the body of Christ to say, nope, that's, that's not, that's not true. It's not of God. Don't do it. Don't access the throne room. But <laughs> in God's grace and mercy was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to let my remnant, I'm going to let my people know this is something that needs to be done. So those of us, especially during 2020, mine was prior to 2020 because the Lord was preparing me for it. We started seeking the Lord, like, why is this happening? So people sought him and he literally took them to the throne room. I have a friend I prayed over her. Actually, she wasn't even a friend. It was a stranger. I prayed over her. We had, uh, we'd actually connected, uh, changed, exchanged phone numbers. Um, and she was like, a, she's a strong advocate against child trafficking. Met her at a, a like a, um, an event for it. And uh, I prayed over her. I told her, Lord, give her visions and dreams, take her into the throne room. She's a powerful intercessor. 
she texted me later that day and she's like, Anne, I went home. I took a nap. I closed my eyes. I entered into the throne room just before I fell asleep. And she was like, it was incredible. So the Lord was like, hey, you seek me, I'll show you. And he opened up the doorway to that. So there's these things that Satan has tried to keep us from believing. Like the main thing is to tell us that that's it is finished. It is done. There's no more work to do. Believe it. Believe that it is finished and that we have all power, all authority, and all dominion over this earth and the spiritual realms and everywhere. And that the fight and the battle is over. But we don't believe it. And you're like, but yeah, I do. If you did, you'd be walking just like Jesus did in signs, wonders, and miracles. And it would be flowing and it'd be so much greater. I don't even know what that looks like, but he said it will be even greater than I. What holds us back from truly believing, connecting our mind to our heart, the feelings and the emotions? That's our soul because our soul holds the mind, will, and the emotions. If we have soul fragments in these other realms that are believing differently, that are being taught differently, then we're not going to manifest that. There's going to be a part of us that doesn't believe it. I'm sure we've all experienced this over the last few years. We were prophesied to. The Lord told us promises and they didn't come to pass. They were not manifested. Well, I'll tell you the answer. It's actually pretty easy. It's not all these, uh, I got to go and sit with a minister and have them do deliverance on me and deliverance on this and that and break all the generational curses and try to figure out in the record rooms in heaven. What is it that I did wrong? Was it my ancestors did wrong? No, it's actually pretty simple. Go after your soul fragments. Remove your soul fragments that don't believe. Take those out of the regions and the realms. Take them into heaven. Have them deprogrammed. So then your mind can open up and your mind can be more connected to the mind of God. Who is God? He is the soul, God's will, our will. We want our will to align with God's will. Stop going after all the other things. And I promise you, go after your soul. You got to break the pride. Okay, I'm just telling you that right now. There are things that happened to you. There are things that you did that were not cool. But you know what? King Jesus died for that. All it takes is saying, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I saw this. I'm sorry I didn't do anything about that. I'm sorry I just went with that. I'm sorry and I forgive those people that hurt me, molested me, abused me when I was little. I forgive them. And you know what happens? Those soul fragments, they get healed. Angels go and they rescue them. They take them from these regions. Oh my gosh, some of the damage I have done. Some of the damage that my ministry has done, just rescuing those soul fragments, destroying the kingdom of darkness, changing our thinking because Jesus can and he does. The more I've res rescued my soul fragments when I did my 40 day fast, the clearer things got, the more connected to Christ I got, the more of the mind of Christ I had. Let's break this counterfeit consciousness. We got to say no more, Satan. No more. I believe it is finished and I stand in it. And when I stand in it and I wait for the manifestations that it is finished, I will save my soul fragments and I will face whatever is in me. And I will surrender that to God and say, God, if I abused somebody, if I hurt somebody, if I did something nasty and horrible, Reveal it to me so that I can go to that soul fragment and then I can have a conversation with it and apologize to it and rescue it and release that pride because that's what it is. It's faith. It's surrendering the pride. The religious spirit keeps us bound to that. So I just bless you with more of this knowledge, more of this understanding. I pray that you are understanding this. I pray that you, I actually just, I encourage you to go to Holy Spirit about this and say, God, is this right? 
is this is this why I haven't seen the promises you've showed me? Is this why I'm still sick? Is it why my children are doing what it is that they're doing? Now, let me tell you, we can intercede for them. We can do the same thing. We can rescue their soul fragments. But it starts with us, just like they say on the airplane. Put the oxygen mask on your face first and then do it to those next to you. Help those next to you. So we must go within. Surrender any pride, any shame. It's not as difficult. It's not as hard as religion, churchianity would tell you or try to lie to you. And if you have in your mind that you're thinking, no, I can't do this. This can't be. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And it's because right now the kingdom of darkness is saying, I don't want you to hear this. I don't want you to believe it. And it's actually probably creating like a feedback, you know, like when a microphone gets too close to the power source, it's like, you know, that's what's going to happen. But I, but I, I promise you, I promise you, once you do this and you get to that soul fragment, oh, there's going to be breakthrough and you're going to go, whoa, why didn't I do this before? It's about rescue. It's about getting to the lies, what you were believing releasing the forgiveness to your soul fragment because they protected you and they also sabotaged you. And then you need to ask it for forgiveness because you haven't acknowledged what it did to protect you. You do those, you forgive yourself, you forgive the soul fragment, you forgive the perpetrators, the people that hurt you. And you reach out and not reach out to them. I'm not saying reach out, but you do all of this in love and by faith. Oh, Heaven is going to rejoice. And then you ask the most high living God, send your angels to rescue this soul fragment. Deprogram it, reprogram it to be aligned with my purpose and destiny. That's you with everybody's purpose and destiny and the truth. So I just bless you with this. I encourage you to do that. Um, I love you. I believe that we can switch this around and I believe we can take the keys back to death and hell that Jesus, King Jesus gave us when he died on the cross, Revelation 1, 17 and 18, go read it. Read John 1, 1 through 5. We were with him in the beginning. We were with him in the end. So what does that mean? It means we rescued our soul fragments when he went to the depths of hell and preached for our soul fragments. We are with him. So it's like we're reliving Revelation 18. And then what happened? He ascended into heaven. We were with him. Where are we right now? We have all power and all authority over sickness, over death, poverty, all of it. <laughs> So I just bless you with this. Uh, I love you all. Check out any of my teachings um, on YouTube. I'm going to try to do as many as I possibly can. Um, I also have a ministry, but that's not why I'm posting this. Um, I have a ministry that teaches more, a mentorship group, um, soul deliverance groups. Uh, so um, I just, um, hmm, yeah. Jesus is so, he's just so awesome. I just pray right now that everybody's going to have a visions and dreams and revelations just as much as I did and even greater and that everybody will feel the love, the overwhelming love of Christ in and through them. Lord, I ask that you protect everybody as they search for the truth. Amen. Amen.